It's food and wine. Holiday edition. We are at Epcot today for the Festival of the Holidays. It may be Epcot's shortest festival, but it's definitely the merriest. So we are going to check out everything from the holiday storytellers to festive eats and treats and even see that little dragon in his adorable holiday sweater. So sweater. grab your passports. Let's go. We got cookies to eat. Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays presented by Advent Health is, like I said, the shortest of the festivals. It kicked off on Black Friday, November 24th and runs through December 30th. At this festival, you've got the holiday kitchens as well as a variety of storytellers, new merchandise. We're going to check it all out. Make sure, as always, that you grab your passport when you get into a festival. It's got the list of all the eats and treats, and it's got the cookie stroll information in the back. And now, before we can get any further, we got to go get our gift cards. We have picked up our gift cards, and as always, we polled you, the man fam, on how much we should spend per person, and you selected between the $50 and $74 range per person, totaling $148. But we do have a special secret guest with us today, so we might go over the limit, you know, with Mama Mammoth here and all. That's right, friends. My mom came to visit for Thanksgiving, so she is here with us enjoying the festival, but she's a little shy, so she won't be on camera, but she is here to help us eat and drink all of the delicious goodies, so we may go over that budget just a little bit. While we were picking up our gift cards, we also checked out the scavenger hunt this year, which is Olaf's Holiday Tradition Expedition, which is a mouthful. It is a scavenger hunt that takes you to find Olaf throughout the World Showcase, where you match stickers with a corresponding tradition. It is $10 to pick up this map, and for the prize this year, you get to select one of the frozen cookie cutter sets. So it's a great way to get your kids up and around the World Showcase so that you can enjoy the food and beverages, Mom and Dad. We have visited our first of the holiday kitchens, Noche Buena Casina, which is right outside Test Track. It is a Latin-inspired booth, and uh, we've gotten Santa's favorite combination of beer and cookies. Let's be honest, this is what Santa really wants. The cookie is important, though, because it is the first cookie on the holiday cookie stroll, which is where if you buy five cookies, there are eight to choose from. You can get any combination of the five you want. You can get five of all the same cookie. You can get five different cookies. You can do it on multiple days. But for each cookie, you're going to get a stamp. And then once you've gotten five, you can get a free cookie because that's exactly what you want after eating more cookies all day. This is a spiced chocolate cookie. It's a new cookie to the stroll this year. Very exciting. So initially I'm a little upset because they did replace my favorite, which was the crinkle cookie with this. When I heard spiced, I thought like hot, like chili, which I actually think would have been a good cookie. It's spiced like ginger and nutmeg and like autumnal spices in the frosting, which I do like. The cookie itself is really fudgy and moist. It's a pretty good cookie. It's large and shareable. So I'm not mad at this one. And I'm going to try the horchata beer. Now, horchata is a popular holiday beverage in Spain as well as in Latin America. And typically it is a spiced, soaked rice beverage. There are other things that it can be soaked in, so I'm excited to try the profile in a beer. Interesting. Oh, okay. Initially, I didn't get a lot of any horchata flavor, but the more, after it sits on the palate, you get a little bit of that light spice, some of the creamy texture and flavor. Otherwise, it just tastes like a lager. I think it's a really light beer and a great sipping beer to take around the showcase, which is what we will be doing. Headed into the Odyssey building now. This is where you can, one, meet Santa Claus, very important information, and two, it is the Holiday Hearth, Hearth. I get confused every year. Booth, which is more sweets and treats, including our next cookie for the cookie stroll. Picked up our food from the Holiday Hearth. So it's Hearth, not Hearth. Yeah, I mean... Gets me every year. <laughs> hearth. It should be spelled like that, then. It's spelled like hearth. That's the same. Her it's spelled like har hearth. Hearth is spelled the same as hearth. No, there should be an E. There is an E. There shouldn't be an E. Oh. Hearth. You heard it here first, folks. Oxford English Dictionary. Get on it. <laughs> From the holiday hearth, we picked up the apple crumb cake. The It's a Butte Pecan and Toffee Stout, and the Peppermint Pinwheel Cookie for our cookie stroll. 
Is it? Is it like a pecan pecan thing? Yeah. Yeah. So then this is could be the it's a beaut pecan and toffee stout. The way doing, I just visibly cringed. <laughs> I uh, this was not on our original list, but it's called the it's a beaut, which is a Christmas vacation joke. So I had to get it, and uh, like I said. We've got an extra person here, which means extra budget. It's a beaut, clock. It's a beaut. Ooh. That literally tastes like toffee. It's got a little caramel flavor in it. It's actually lighter than it looks. I don't think I could drink a whole big one, but to share this little sample of it, it's very delicious. Also trying the apple crumb cake, which is very crumbly. That is delicious. The bad part is it's a little dry. It's very crumbly and gonna be very messy. It's kind of a coffee cake texture. Lots of that crumble on top. It's got a little bit of caramel on top that's adding an extra sweetness, but it's not too sweet. Love the apple flavor. This is delicious. And here we have the peppermint pinwheel cookie. Now, I also make peppermint pinwheels, but mine are chocolate peppermint pinwheels year over year. So let's see how this compares. It is a cookie that I have eaten most recently. I think it has some okay peppermint flavor. I wish there was more. Um, but I think my biggest issue is this is a sugar cookie base, and sometimes sugar cookies can be really dry, and that's what's happening here, which I think takes away from the fact that it does have pretty good peppermint flavor is the fact that my mouth is now the Sahara. I do love how they transform this space for every festival. Of course, it's got Santa and different themed Christmas things in here now, especially because this is Santa's headquarters. During Food and Wine, they had the Muppets Laboratory in here. They've made it figment themed at Festival of the Arts. I just really think this is a great way to use this space. And I do like that they moved Santa in here. I think the background's better in the American Adventure, but this is a way bigger, less traffic space for you to be able to meet Santa Claus. Speaking of meeting Santa, the sweet cast member just showed me that uh, they are handing out wish lists for Santa with pencils when you get in line so you can give Santa your wishes. And then he, in return, may just have a little treat for you. It's a really cute picture frame ornament. Just pick up our food from Los Pasadas Sala de Kitchen and there were no tables, so you know what time it is. Trash can table time, it's trash can table time. Ba -ba -da. Feliz Navidad. Ooh. And from Los Pasadas, we have picked up the giant tostada de chorizo and the tamale de barbacoa. This looks like healthier portions than a festival's past. That tostada is large. Also, are you Giada from the Food Network? Because the accent in which you are presenting the, the Mexican food. I'm just doing my best to try to say it correctly, Maybe okay? I'm just jealous because every time I speak with any other language, I sound... You do your best. I try. You know, you do your best. I try. This thing looks amazing. It's a giant tostada with a black bean puree, ground chorizo sausage, some pickled onion, salsa verde, cotija cheese, and crema. I'm delighted about this. I also am not 100% sure the best way to eat this. Oh, we're just going in. So I'm just doing it. <laughs> best to the fest, calling it right now. Oh, look. It's kind of hard to eat on the outsides because you're not getting all the flavors, but once you mix in some of the salsa and the pickled red onions, this is delightful. First of all, it actually has a little bit of heat from that chorizo and from the salsa verde, which I'm loving because there isn't always actual heat in food. Not super spicy, but if you're spice adverse, be aware. I love all of the black bean puree. The tostada is crispity, crunchity. I love the ground chorizo. I mean, like this is best of the fest. I don't know if a savory dish is going to beat this for me because I love Mexican food and they nailed it with this one. And I picked up the tamale de barbacoa, which is shredded barbacoa beef in a corn masa topped with mole negro, queso cojita, crema mexicana, and pickled onions. And it looks like they've done the hard work and already opened up the tamale for me, so let's try to get everything. Wow, that's a lot more than I thought I was going to get in terms of the meat. Now, the masa is very good. The sad part is, is that the barbacoa, at least in that bite, it's very dry, so I'm going to try to get a little bit more of some sauce and maybe a pickled onion. Altogether, I think this is fine. 
what's really holding it back for me is it doesn't feel like the barbacoa was seasoned really heavily, and it's also pretty dry, but the masa itself is tasty, and I'm enjoying the mole and the pickled onions. So it sounds like if you're coming to Los Posadas in Mexico, skip the tamale, stick with the tostada. Continuing our stroll through World Showcase, gonna find some more eats. Did catch a few moments of Mariachi Cobre, the band in Mexico doing their Las Posadas celebration. One of my favorite things about this festival is that around World Showcase, you have the holiday storytellers, which are different entertainment offerings that teach you how people celebrate this time of year around the world. So you've got Mariachi Cobra singing Christmas songs in Mexico. You've got the Hanukkah storyteller. He's one of my favorites, hoping to see him in a little bit. You've got the Barn Santa in Norway, Chinese New Year. So to me, that's a really special thing about Festival of the Holidays and one of my favorite parts of the celebration. Also very special to this festival, the gigantic Christmas tree right here as you enter World Showcase. And it has special 100th anniversary snow globe ornaments on it. That's cute. Also, don't forget friends, the Disney 100 booths, which are booths that are celebrating the 100th anniversary of Disney World, for some reason, are still open. So you've got Bubbles and Brine, Wine and Wedge, Char and Chop, and Swirled Showcase. We're not hitting these today though because we did in our second food and wine video. So if you wanna see more of them there, you can, but there's nothing actually holiday or Disney 100 about any of these booths other than the beautiful decor. From Refreshment Port, we have picked up the turkey poutine with sweet potato fries, turkey, gravy, a cranberry relish, jam? Relish. Relish, and some crispy onions on top. This is either gonna be amazing or the opposite of that. Uh-huh. All right, let's, uh, you know, we gotta get a bit of everything, right? Oh, wow, that is a coated fry. I think this all hinges, it all hinges on the turkey. If, I agree. If the turkey is dry, Cheers. this is bad. Wow, that feels like so much less than what I got. Huh. Hmm. That is certainly a medley of flavors and textures. Oh, there's the cranberry. I was wondering when it was gonna come in. Hot take. The turkey's not bad. I don't hate it. There's something else that's throwing me off though. It's a lot of textures. It's a lot of flavors. You know what it is. The, Sorry. the sweet potato fries are awesome though. Like I would take a huge bowl of these perfectly crispy sweet potato fries. I'm more confident than ever, this is a cranberry. We don't need the cranberry. Yeah, I do agree. I thought it would add a nice tartness, but it's just kind of throwing the whole thing off. I retract my statement. I feel completely neutral about this dish. Yeah. It's a good shareable, but I don't think it's a must eat. Maybe if you ask them to order without the cranberry relish, it's gonna be better, but it's, I, I, I'm in agreement. Yeah. Why are we keep eating it? It's curiosity. Hmm. Also, though, I'm about to take this curious experiment over to watch Joyful because they're performing now. Come on. You know what that dish is? Tell me. It is the Rachel's trifle of Festival of the Holidays. First, there's a layer of lady fingers, then a layer of jam, then custard, which I made from scratch. <laughs> then raspberries, more lady fingers, then beef sauteed with peas and onions, <laughs> and more custard. <laughs> bananas and then I just put some whipped cream on top. Uh, it's the cranberry relish. The cranberry relish is the beef sautéed with peas and onions. <laughs> beef in a dessert. <laughs> Headed to watch Joyful now. This is a gospel choir that comes and sings Christmas and Kwanzaa songs. They are one of my favorite things every year because they are amazing. Make sure you see them if you come to this festival. experience. I especially love when they get to the Kwanzaa section and they sing like 
Motown music, like Earth, Wind & Fire, and it's just like, they're the best. They're my favorite entertainment here, besides the Hanukkah Storyteller, who will hopefully see soon. And here we have the Influencer, stepping ever so gingerly, so as to not spill a flight of beer. I worry, though, that her efforts shall be in vain, as even now I see some slight sloshing over the edge. Amazing. Look at the approach. Season practice of years past have brought us to this moment in time. And so she delivers the beer to go along with the delightful eats. Amazing. The wind. I fear the wind. Season's greeting from the place we currently are, Canada and the Yukon Holiday Kitchen, where we have chosen some delectable looking eats and treats to share this holiday season. Yuletide greetings from your family to ours. We will have our seasonal special soon. On the first day of Christmas, but you're not getting me the keys to a Lamborghini. From the Yukon Holiday Kitchen, we have got the beef bourbonio which you have to say, like Julia Child, I didn't make the rules. Uh, we also have the Snickerdoodle cookie for the cookie stroll. They're really missing an opportunity to call it the Snickers Doodle. I actually think they called it in years past and too many people probably didn't get, make the joke, but I'll make it for them. As well as the beer flight, because this beer flight is unique. So we had to try it. I am trying the beef bubble. Because I have to say it that way because apparently we don't make the rules. And that is beef and potatoes. I am very excited. Wow, it's a lot of flavor. Okay, the beef is very tender. A little bit of acidity on the back end, which is not what I was expecting. It is, it's very rich, and then you have some acidity cut through. Tastes almost a bit like an apple cider vinegar. And the potatoes themselves, they are not like, they're not whipped, they are chunky mashed potatoes. So if you are a texture averse person, just know that these potatoes do have chunks of potato in them. As somebody who likes that, I'm a big fan. Getting into the Snickers doodle. So it's got chunks of Snickers in here. Uh-oh. It's fine. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I had high hopes for this cookie because it was good last year. It's a little dry, and I want bigger chunks of Snickers because Snickers are one of my favorite cookie. It's also really messy. I'm sure it's all over my face right now. It's definitely all over my hands. And as a messy eater in general, I don't love a particularly messy cookie, but especially one that's not worth it. So this is fine. It's just kind of average. I'm not dazzled. All right. Going to try the beer flight now, which is the... 81 Bay Brewing Company Peanut Butter Banana Porter, the Playa Linda Bluing, Bluing. The Bluing Company. Playa Linda Brewing Company Maple Cookie Blonde Ale, and the Collective Arts Coffee Maple Porter. What are you, what's that? The I'm starting with the peanut butter banana. I am starting with the cookie blonde ale, because that's what I am today, a cookie blonde. Cookie blonde. I'm a blonde that's full of cookies. Ah, ah. What's this been? This is delicious. It slightly got that maple flavor, a little bit of cookie, but it mostly just tastes like a really good classic ale. I'm into that. This is a porter that says it tastes like peanut butter and banana. Wait a minute, there's the banana. It's on the very, very back end. I mean, it's a light and refreshing porter, which is wild to say about a porter. Um, but I don't really taste a lot of the banana. I do taste some of the peanut butter. This one is a revelation because it's a coffee porter and it literally tastes like cold brew and beer had a baby. Those are two of my favorite things. That's amazing. One, two, I'm gonna assume three. I haven't tried this one yet. Three. I, I agree with your order. I concur. But a fun flight to try. We are in France and have gone to La Marche de Noël and picked up the Crème de Semon Fumé in Brioche à Lanth. I'm really butchering that. Concombre. Concombre, correct. As well as the La Jurie Cocktail de Noël, which looks incredible. You did great. I also popped into La Artisan des Glaces. 
You crushed. Did I? Yeah. Uh, to get the holiday seasonal macaron ice cream sandwich. So this is not listed as a festival food. It is a seasonal treat. It's one of the best. It's uh, freshly baked macarons with peppermint ice cream in between. And I need you to know, they still had the pumpkin macaron ice cream sandwich available, but I know you like peppermint, so I got the peppermint. Thank you. It is no secret, I love peppermint. Oh, I'm so excited. The macaron is incredible. The ice cream, light and minty and refreshing. I mean, you're gonna make a mess, but it's delicious. Best of the fast, for sure. I am trying this cocktail, which is listed as vodka, Grey Goose vodka, cold brew coffee, sea salt caramel toffee, and peppermint. I don't know if that's two different vodkas or just Grey Goose listed twice, but I love coffee. I hope it's not too sweet. Double the vodka, double the fun. That is true. A boozy coffee that actually tastes like coffee and not just sugar, that is a treat. Little tiny bit of peppermint, not really tasting the caramel, just mostly tasting coffee, vodka, and just a, a peppermint. That is fantastic. Just a smooch of peppermint? It's like a candy cane whip to the cup. Ah. Best of the fest. Now this is cream of smoked salmon and a house-made dill brioche bread with cucumber. So, I'm a, I'm a little nervous. It's been said many a time, I'm not a seafood girly, but I'm willing to try. This is actually very refreshing, and I'm trying to find the words. Okay, there it is. It is a little bit fishy on the back end. That's what I was sort of looking for. The texture reminds me a little bit of almost a, like a tuna fish or a tuna salad. So if you like a tuna salad or maybe like tuna melts, you're going to be totally fine with the texture. If you're averse to that, maybe avoid. What I am most surprised by is the prevalence of the dill that really shines through first, followed by the freshness of the cucumber. I'm, I'm actually a fan. Is it the best of the fest? No, but I'm not mad at that. Molly here, I actually love it. This could crack my best of the fest. That is so refreshing and delicious. Wow. And the I love I dill. Eat, you know, the more I eat, I think it makes it. I think, I'm so surprised by that. Joyo Noel, that means Merry Christmas! Father Christmas! I am the good spirit of the season! How is it sure for me to see all of you in such good spirit? That's enough. Enjoyed some delicious eats and treats in France. Also caught Père Noël, who tells the story of putting goodies in your shoes at Christmas, which I actually did as a little kid in French class. And also he had a Madeleine doll, which I used to watch that story as well. Heartwarming indeed. And another thing I love about this festival are the decorations. I particularly love the giant ornaments uh, that are vignettes of Paris. I also love the giant teapot in the United Kingdom. Just fun to see those different decorations every year. And now we are headed to La Chaim, which is a Hanukkah themed booth, as well as the Hanukkah Storyteller is gonna start soon. And I, he's a joy for me every year. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. My name is Zachary and I am so thrilled to celebrate Hanukkah with all of you here at the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. During my time abroad, I traveled from one corner of the world to the next, and I learned two things. The world doesn't actually have any corners, and people in different places and cultures celebrate Hanukkah in their own unique ways, and it is beautiful. There is at least one thing that every Hanukkah celebration has in common, the telling of a story. Not just any story, but a miraculous story. There is only enough for one day. We cannot let the holy light dwindle again. So. They lit the menorah and they prayed. And the flame lasted two days, three days, four, five, six, seven, eight days. The holy flame still burns. A great miracle has happened here. 
That small vial of oil lasted for eight nights, long enough to cleanse the temple and get more blessed oil. Oh, dos candelicas, tres candelicas, cuatro candelicas, cinco candelicas, seis candelicas, siete candelicas, ocho candelas para mí. I just love the Hanukkah storyteller. I think he's my favorite of all the storytellers around the world. He's just such a good performer. The music's beautiful. I think it's a very important little stop on your holiday tour. But now, we have Hanukkah Eats. From L'chaim, we have picked up the potato latkes. This also can come with salmon on top. We have chosen to just get it regular, no salmon. It's important to note that this is also a plant-based option here at L'chaim. And we have also picked up the pastrami on rye, which was one of my favorites last year. So my fingers are crossed that it will also be my favorite this year. Although, just looking at it, uh, I think it will be. All right. I'm curious as to what this dressing is made of, because it looks like yogurt, but since it's a plant-based dish, it must not be dairy yogurt, which is nice. Mm. I love dill, so the last two stops have been very good for me. This dill dressing is fantastic. I want to put that on everything. I want to put that on a salad. I want to dip things into it. Delicious. The lot has cooked perfectly. Nice and crispy on the outside. We used to eat potato pancakes growing up a lot, so this reminds me of that. These are A+. Plus, a simple, delicious treat. And here we have a pastrami on marbled rye with a house-made mustard and pickles. Also house-made pickles. We're going to just extract that really quickly. <laughs> We're not going to need that. So good. The bread is so fresh, it's stuck to my tooth. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, a little garlicky, very dilly. That's incredible. This is my best of the fest. It is just so very tasty. The rye bread comes through with that, that sort of punch of the rye flavor, the pastrami. There's so much on there, and it complements with the stone ground mustard so well. I it's hard to find fault with this style of sandwich, although I, I may be biased. This is one of my favorite styles of sandwiches of pastrami on rye. This is just so good. It's worth mentioning that Morocco has basically the same menu they had during food and wine. So if you want to stop here, I recommend getting the bread with the different dips. That includes hummus, zoug, and chamoula sauce. It's delicious and was a real highlight during our food and wine trip. But we're trying to stay on budget, so we're going to skip it this time around. And from Japan, thank you, Molly, for being a hand model from Shiwasu. We have picked up the sushi tree, which, as the name would suggest, is a tree of sushi. My chopstick skills. Well done with the chopsticks. Mm -hmm. Molly's chopstick skills are much improved after our trip to Japan, but as the resident sushi lover here, I'm going to dive in. So this is crab with a K. Meat, a spicy sauce, some roe on top with some cream cheese. All in all, it's a pretty da balanced bit of sushi. This is a great basic sushi to get, especially if you have somebody in your party who wants to try sushi but doesn't want to try raw fish. I think this is a good starting point. I really enjoy it. Just some classic flavors here. Headed into the American Pavilion, but we are going to be skipping the funnel cake because one, we have a lot more cookies to eat and a lot of other sweet treats. And two, I know it's a hot take, but funnel cake is overrated. That's ridiculous. But I agree that we have more cookies to eat. Cookies greater than funnel cake. Always. Now we'd be remiss to come into the American Adventure Pavilion and not talk about one of the highlights of the Festival of the Holidays, the Candlelight Processional. It happens nightly here in the American Gardens Theater and it features a choir of cast members as well as accompanying high school choirs and a celebrity narrator tells the classic story of Christmas. So tonight is Chrissy Metz, who you may know from This Is Us. We came last year and saw Simu Liu, who's Shang-Chi. He's back this year. You've also got folks like John Stamos, Whoopi Goldberg, Neil Patrick Harris, lots of great actors and actresses and other famed people come and tell the story. If you're looking for like a classic Christmas tradition, this is it. Now, for me personally, it's a little long. And I gotta say, it does remind me a lot of the holiday program I did every year from kindergarten to sixth grade. Basically the same set list. Maybe my orchestra teacher stole it from here. Who's to say? 
If you are interested in seeing Candlelight and there's a particular narrator you're really excited about, you may want to consider a dining package. They have packages you can book in advance at places like the Beer Garden, La Cellier, Spice Road Table. Uh, we did that last year and you can enjoy some food and you'll get a reserved seating here in the theater. If you're unsure or you are a last minute planner, you can do a day of walk up package at Regal Eagle Smokehouse here in American Adventure. Those are first come first serve. And I do wanna note last year's Spice Road Table, what we did was also first come first serve. This year you're booking that one in advance as well. But Candlelight, it's a classic Epcot tradition. And again, it's, it's pretty much like as classic Christmas as you can get. star that they had seen went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Stopped by the American holiday table and opted to skip the Thanksgiving dinner because, you know, I already ate that a few days ago, and went instead for the gingerbread cookie, which is part of the cookie stroll, and the beer flight, because this one had some interesting looking brews. Oops. I'm willing to bet that's a nightmare. So this is a little bit more of a traditional gingerbread cookie. Very molasses forward. Then a little bit of ginger on the back end. I will say it isn't super sweet, which I'm a fan of. The only thing that I don't really love is that again, it's pretty darn dry. And for a cookie with this much molasses, that surprises me a little bit. But if you are a fan of a more traditional gingerbread cookie, you're really going to enjoy this just because of how molasses forward it is. Pretty middle of the road. Time for the beer flight. We have the Crooked Can Brewing Company Bah Hop Bug IPA. Great joke. Three Daughters Brewing Eggnog White Porter. And the Playa Linda Peppermint Chocolate Stout. Which one do you want to start with? Hop Bug. I will start with the Peppermint Chocolate Stout. Very carefully. Extracting the beer. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Clink. Mm. It's a pretty classic IPA. Definitely hop buggy. Crisp. It's pretty standard, but good. If you made an Andes mint into a beer, that would be this beer. Interesting. It's delicious. I couldn't drink more than one full, like 16 ounce pour of that. But it is so pepperminty Whoa. and so good. That's a treat. Oh yeah. This somehow tastes like both eggnog and beer. I am surprised by that. Now I gotta know. It's creamy. It's spicy, but not like hot, but like it's got the spices of eggnog, the, the <gasps> autumnal flavors. I do think the peppermint one's the best, but that's an interesting beer flight. If you're looking for something unusual, this is it. Number one, peppermint. Number two, Baja Bug. Number three, eggnog. I would agree. We, we concur. Aligned. Why did I concur? Headed into the American Adventure building now because the Voices of Liberty, the beautiful a cappella group that sings in the rotunda here, does the Dickens Carolers this time of year. So they are in traditional caroling garb and their voices are beautiful as they sing Christmas songs. The other thing you have to check out when you're here for Festival of the Holidays are the gingerbread displays in here because they make gingerbread recreations of iconic American monuments in DC. So I think I spot the Lincoln Monument, MLK, and this building all in gingerbread form. Look at how beautiful it is. I love the Mickey topiary, the dog delivering letters to Santa. Like this is gingerbread and it blows my mind. Look at Mickey up at the top.
pieces are so unbelievable. I also love that they have the more traditional outfits this time of year. They're just, it's just nice to see them again. Yeah, normally during the day recently, they look like cruise singers and they haven't had the, the colonial outfits on, so it's nice they bring them back for this time of year. I gotta know though, of those delightful frocks, which which one would you like to wear? First of all, kudos on using delightful frocks. I do what I can. Second of all, I would like to wear the fur-adorned tuxedo oh, with top hat that, like, of one of the first soloists we, we heard oh, come forward he and sing. Oh, he was lovely. Um, I think there's only one choice for the ladies wear, that big blue and orange hat. Ah, oh, it, it is a bit, you know, like the, like the elegant peacock. Yes. It does extend to the heavens. I loved it. Making our way through Italy where they have the Tuscany Holiday Kitchen, which we are going to be skipping. While we do have a special secret guest, and that means we are going to be expanding our budget, we're still skipping Italy. Do always have to stop and point out one of my favorite decorations, though. I love that here at the miniature train station in Germany, the German town is also celebrating the holiday because they put the identical banners up. So that way, Lars and Frank and Wilhelm... And Lars and Wilhelm, that's what you can come up with. Greta. Okay. Mar Next. Maria. Uh huh, we're going sound of music names now, go on. Liesel. Nice. Rolf. Uh huh. <laughs> Keep it up. The captain. <laughs> now, to be fair, they're, they're from Austria, but yeah. Close. Uh, I think those names are probably German as well. Anyway, they're all celebrating. They're all celebrating the festival of the holidays. Oh, yeah. Guten Tag from Germany, where we have visited the Bavaria Holiday Kitchen to get some holiday classics. You know, the menu hasn't changed at a lot of these booths this year, and I'm not mad about that in Germany specifically. You've got the pork schnitzel, you've got the Linzer cookie, our fifth cookie that completes our cookie stroll, and most importantly, tis the reason for the season, this bread bowl full of hot cheese. It's a bowl of bread with extra bread, vegetables, and potatoes to dip in hot cheese. Like, Thank you, Santa Claus. What, what have you done? Obviously, this is best of the festival. Really. This is the top of the list. Like everything else I've said, that tostada is pretty close. Everything else, not as good as this. It's a bowl of hot cheese. It's like nutty Swiss style cheese. It kind of reminds me of raclette cheese. The bread is perfect and soft. The potatoes are delicious. What, what more do you want? It's cheesenable. I'm going to try the schnitzel. It is a pork cutlet with a mushroom sauce, cabbage, and spot sole on the base. Let's dive in. Everything that we can. Mm. Mm. The star of the show here is the mushroom sauce. The schnitzel's good. Bread it pretty well. It's not as thin as I'm used to with schnitzels. Um, it's still very tasty and flavorful, but again, I think most of that's coming from the mushroom sauce, which is very savory, a little bit earthy, some herbaceous notes. I think it's fine. Um, certainly not best of the fest, but nothing I'm gonna turn away. And our fifth cookie, the Linzer. I know it looks like I'm telling you to hold on, but I'm just trying to tell you that this is my number one cookie on the cookie stroll this year, which is good, because some of them have been not, not great. I say this with love to the Linzer cookie. It tastes like a delicious Pop-Tart, because you've got this nice buttery, crumbly uh, cookie on the outside, and then you've got the nice tart. It tastes like raspberry jam, so it's not super sweet. It's not artificially sweet. It's just sweet enough, a little powdered sugar on top. This is an A-plus cookie. I would get this one whether or not I was doing the cookie stroll interrupting our feeding tour of the holidays to bring you the holiday merchandise. Did speak with the cast member who said they have pretty much everything that they have in the bigger stores right out here in the holiday markets around World Showcase. So the only thing they're missing is a few annual pass holder items that are up in Creation Shop. But as far as everything else goes, let's take a look. Cookie jar, pass holder hoodie, Sherpa spirit jersey, purse, ornament, blanket, corksicle tumbler, pin, 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 pin. Interesting fact about these pins that uh, the cast member Anthony just told me, you have to load them with $100 on this gift card, but then the pin's basically free. So it's $100 gift card plus a pin. Anyway, pass holder pin, ornament pin, Mickey pin, mug, 
different ornament. Headphone case, phone case. And it seems like that's it. A small but mighty holiday collection this year. I do really like the color scheme of it being the black and the gold and the white. It's a nice deviation from the classic red and green Christmas because if you watched our Very Merry video, you know there is so much Christmas merchandise this year. It's nice to see this look a little different. Grabbed some beers from Refreshment Outpost right here. They looked like they had some more unique flavors. I, got, I will go to this festival. There hasn't been a ton of new food, but I am delighted by the new and interesting beers they've brought. This is a cinnamon orange cranberry wheat beer. And mine is a gingerbread white stout. Cheers. Cheers. That tastes like more gingerbread than the cookie, is and it? I love it. Is this alcoholic? It tastes like juice. Good. That tastes like juice. I like this one better. I agree. I think the gingerbread stout is better. Now, when you hear stout, a lot of people think really heavy beers. This is a white stout, so it's a lot lighter. Um, and it's really gingery and light and refreshing. Mine is also very light, but it's too light. It's too sweet for me. There's a little bit of cinnamon, but it mostly tastes like sparkling cran orange juice. I would skip this one next time. Not not, not on my faves list. It somehow tastes like a LeFou brew. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. eats lucky food and will spread good fortune to all. Enjoyed the lion dance for Lunar New Year. That's always one of my favorite of the storytellers. It's so cool and acrobatic. Also made me really excited for Lunar New Year coming to Disneyland in January. Can't wait to go there. Uh, and then stopped by the Shanghai Holiday Kitchen for a delicious dish here in China. And guess what? We can't find a table. So you know what that means. It's trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Ba -ba -da. Ni hao. All right, and we have picked up the chicken skewers with their signature peanut sauce. It looks like some scallions and black and white sesame seeds on top. This looks very saucy. I have high hopes. Mm -hmm. Very saucy, a little spicy. Moist for the most part throughout. Yeah, they crushed it this year. This is a return to form. Well done. Oh. We have passed through Norway, got to watch the show, learn about Barn Santa, but we are on our way to pick up our redemption cookie. That's right, after eating five cookies, our reward is another cookie. And I am very excited to eat this little wishing star cookie from the movie Wish. Surprising to no one, I derailed us on a coffee-related mission. I stopped by one of the Joffrey's carts because they have a specialty horchata cold brew. It's the same at all the carts in the park, but it is uh, shaky Jamaican cold brew mixed with some horchata and cream. It's supposed to go with whipped cream on top, but I just got the cinnamon on top instead. Delicious. Still a little on the sweeter side compared to when I drink the black shaky Jamaican, but it's got the cinnamon and the horchata flavor that we talked about earlier with the beer. It's a nice seasonal treat if you're looking for a fun cold brew that's not too sweet. And what was a short walk, we've gotten distracted once again by the absolute beautiful tree here in Epcot. I do love the 100 year anniversary ornaments, especially now when they've been lit up. It's just stunning. But that will not keep us from our final reward, our final cookie here at Sweets and Treats. Here it is, our prize for completing the cookie stroll. We got a cute little star stamp and then a star cookie, as well as the peppermint milkshake from here at Holiday Sweets and Treats. We skipped this booth earlier on purpose because this is a menu item and it's only a little bit smaller. Plus you get the cup, the fun uh, take home cup if you do it from the cookie stroll versus just buying the peppermint shake. So a little pro tip, if you wanna eat both, get out of here, bug. If you wanna eat both, five cookies and the peppermint shake, eat the cookies first. Congrats to us. Go we, team. We really earned these. We did it. Yeah. Bink. Sorry, Star. Ooh. 
you know, I expected to say this was not a good cookie, but it's not bad. It's a pretty standard, like, shortbread-y sugar cookie with the kind of, like, hard icing on it. It's packaged, but it's really cute. It's not a bad cookie. I assumed you wouldn't be able to get this cookie unless you did the cookie stroll, because that's often the case, but I just asked the cast members, and they said it's a secret menu item. You can ask at the cash register of sweets and treats, and you can just buy this cookie if you want it. It's $4, which is a dollar more than any of the other cookies, because you got to pay for that new IP, you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Star, more expensive than Pinwheel. Now, this Frosty, I was expecting it to be peppermint throughout. You have peppermint crumbles on top, but it's just a chocolate shake really it, it tastes a little bit akin to a Wendy's chocolate frosting so I don't hate it but it wasn't what I was expecting which is peppermint I think the straws are fun if you're already gonna buy five cookies again you don't have to do it all on the same day you can get any mix and match variety of the different cookies there's eight cookies in total you could choose from some of the ones we had today were a little lackluster but I have heard that the M&M cookie that uh, we didn't get is actually pretty good so just kind of depends. I will say though, it's no cheese crawl, which is what is at Food and Wine. It makes me miss a cheese crawl, a savory crawl. I love a savory crawl, especially a cheese based one. Sorry, Star. Your wish isn't coming true now. I'm sorry, you ate him first. Not his eye. You took his eye. I just took a little bit of the time. You bit off his head. My wish will never come true. No. It's for more cheese. After a day full of eating tasty treats with our bellies full, it's now time to ride a thrilling, a riveting attraction through our imagination so we can see Figment in a cute little sweater. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> can start appearing and each of us Imagines different things My house and innovation Imagination really clowns around <laughs> Next time tie it up You know, I'm not the biggest Figment fan but I do appreciate a seasonal attire. A holiday sweater. I appreciate commitment to a seasonal look, <laughs> so I like Figment better during the holidays, personally. But now we're headed to what I think is the better holiday overlay. It's the Living with the Land glimmering greenhouses right next to the Land Pavilion. Make sure it's dark when you ride this because they put beautiful Christmas lights all over the greenhouses and it makes a great ride even better. It's my favorite attraction. Also, weird they didn't do the Guardians overlay this year. Last year they did holiday huh. music on Guardians, but not this year. Huh. Hmm. if you come to Epcot this time of year. It's about the only time you see Living with the Land get kind of a line in the evening, but worth it. I, one of my favorite details is that they actually have little icons on ingredients that are used throughout the festival. So they have like spices, sweets. Citrus. Yeah, meat, feast, I guess, which is like meat, Meats, vegetables, uh, which is cool. And it makes it fun when you go eat something. You're like, oh, this nutmeg came from the ride. Um, quick question though. Let's say you're a fish. <laughs> on Live With The Land, and you have a nice quiet life, and then all of a sudden they're like, Christmas lights in your tank. You know what? If I was a fish, yeah. I'd be like, you know what? Thanks for sprucing the place up. I'd be like, I'm trying to sleep. I, You know, Molly, I'm not sure the fish really care that much. I think they're like, I would like a nap, and now you're blinding me. <laughs> I, I live <laughs> in a light, I live, you think they leave the lights on all night? but I think that it's much brighter than it during the day. That's true. It is much brighter during the day. But I well, think I'd enjoy it. If they light up the place. Think the do you think the fish are grateful The fish for the are festival? feeling the holiday spirit. That's nice. <laughs> I 
that's nice. Yes. What a fun time it's been. The weather has been beautiful yes. today. It hasn't been that crowded, surprisingly, even though it's Thanksgiving weekend, and it has been a lovely day at Festival of the Holidays, but the day is basically over, so it's time to bring you, one, our Cookie Stroll Cookie Ranking, and two, the best of the fest. Starting with the Cookie Stroll Cookie Ranking, surprising to everyone, us mostly, Yeah. we have the exact same ranking. I think we both went through that in the queue a little bit early, and we're like, wait a minute. It's the same. It's the same. It's a, it's a Mammoth Club first. Yes. But Without further ado. Starting at the bottom, number six. Now we're here. Sorry. And yeah. Unfortunately, number six, the Peppermint Pinwheel. A disappointment. Yeah. Number five, the Snickerdoodle. Mm. Number four, the Gingerbread Cookie. Yeah. Number three, the Star Redemption Cookie. Which was surprising. Yeah. A, 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 honestly, a dark horse. Yeah. Number two, the Spiced Chocolate Cookie. And number one, by a long shot, no questions asked, the Linzer. Just every year, the Linzer cookie blows it out of the water. Just get five of those. Yes. Skip the rest of the cookies. Maybe get one spiced and get four Linzers. Good plan. And now for our best of the fest. Actually, let's start with the worst of the fest so we can end on a high note. Let's do it. For me, it was the beer from Refreshment Outpost, Ooh. the cinnamon, orange, cranberry, wheat ale. It was... Yeah. It was something. In a, in a day full of really good, interesting craft beers, that wasn't one of them. So that was not good for me. And for me, I just felt personally attacked by the peppermint pinwheel oh, cookie. Sure, sure. It is normally a holiday treat that I love and I love to make. And that one just wasn't it. No, it was just not. Just wasn't it. No, it was not. But now the best of the fest. Yeah. Let's end it on a high note. Yep. Without further ado, my best of the fest is as follows. The cold brew beer from Canada. The potato latka from La Haya, The Linzer cookie from Bavaria Kitchen. The chorizo tostada from Mexico. And of course, a classic favorite of mine, the bowl of hot cheese from Germany. <laughs> Tis the season. A festival staple. Wait, wait, I forgot one. I forgot one, a late entry. The boozy cold brew from France. Oh! That was delicious, and yeah. I love a boozy cold brew that's not too sweet. So that I'm, I'm adding a six, because I, I want to. And now for my best of the fest. We have the gingerbread white stout from the Refreshment Outpost. We have the peppermint macaron ice cream sandwich from France. The salmon sandwich, there, there's really no better way to put that. The salmon dill sandwich from France. The pastrami sandwich from Lachaim. And the caramel apple crumb cake from Holiday Hearth. 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 We spent a little under $200 on the festival today. Again, we had a bonus friend, my mom, friend, I don't... Mammoth mom. We had Mama Mammoth here. Mama Mammoth. So we spent a little more than we normally do at the festivals, but also, it's the holidays. Yeah. Treat yourself. Yeah. Come on. We have done just about everything there is to do at Festival of the Holidays, but there's one last thing. We're going to head up to the front of the park and watch the light show on Spaceship Earth. They do these light shows every few minutes once it becomes dark. This is the only beacon from the 50th that remains, and thank goodness, because she is the most beautiful oh. girl in school. Absolutely. And uh, every few minutes they do a Christmas light show, so we're going to go check that out before we call it a night. Just watch the light show here at Spaceship Earth. It's currently featuring music from Wish, the new Disney movie that just came out. Uh, and then sometimes it turns into a holiday themed ball. So we've seen it like red and white looking like a candy cane, but there's not actually a Christmas show. We just confirmed with the cast member. Well, friends, that is officially a wrap on our Festival of the Holidays videos. Let us know what you're most excited about trying, what looks the best to you in the comments down below. And until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, Follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join the conversation about this or any other video, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been very magical. And Holly. And, and very Jolly. festive. Ooh. And uh, now we're going to take my mom to go see the Moana thing. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye.